Good morning, good morning. We on. We on. We on live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is your morning medicine. This is your morning medicine. And today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will delight you. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will delight you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You know, one of the scriptures I often hear, and this is a scripture that I believe has a lot of, let me see, what's the word for it? It has a lot of fire behind it. I'm going to say it like that. Because oftentimes when I hear this scripture quoted, nobody quotes it in a down mood. Man, they quote it and they fired up about it. They fired up about the Lord. But yet when I look at this scripture and I read this scripture, I sometimes question when people say this scripture, when people yell it out or that fire that's behind it or the excitement that comes with it. And that scripture that I'm talking about, you may have heard it. Now you probably have said it. Where people say, well, he'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart. How many times have you heard that often said? Well, he'll give you the desires of your heart. I mean, if I'm talking about a car, if I'm talking about whatever monetary thing, if I'm talking about a job, I'm talking about uh, wanting to get married, if I'm talking about, I don't know, getting a new desk for my office, if I'm whatever the case may be, you hear many people say this with conviction, say this with that oomph, say this with fire. Man, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And oftentimes, it's correlated to the need of a monetary thing. It's correlated to the need of something in the natural, something physical. You know, if you need X, Y, Z or Z, Y, A, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But I really want to take a, a second this morning to really examine that thought. Really to examine when we say God would give you the desires of your heart. Because when you look at that scripture, or... I'm going to say this. No, when you look at your thought behind it and sometimes the utilization of that scripture, oftentimes it's focused on us and not God. What desires of your heart is God giving? Will God just give anything? Will God just give you anything? Oh, because you think that thing is good. That means he'll give you the desires of it. Oh, since that thing came to mind, that means he's going to give it to you. And I think oftentimes we don't have the proper understanding of giving him giving us our desires, the desires of our heart. Then what do you mean by that? What does it communicate? Well, I want to break this thing down because when people quote God to give you the desires of your heart, they're quoting a psalm in Psalm chapter 37. And I want to turn to that psalm because this thing all comes together and take a moment to read that psalm. Many people love to quote, he'll give you the desires of your heart. 
because the focus is on us and not on him. Let me go ahead and get deep into this thing. Psalms 34 says this. I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read starting verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I want you to notice a few couple things there. Sometimes we skip over to the delight part and we forget about the parts prior. What does God say? He says, trust in him. Well, I'm trusting in him to give me this house. I'm trusting in him to get me this fill in a blank. Then he says, and, and is a conjunction word with, with connects. He says, trust in me and do what is good. Uh-oh. Now we're seeing a scene of separation because you have to trust in him and do what is good. Then he says, dwell in the land and live securely. Verse four, he says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So when the Lord says, take delight in him and he will give you the desires of your heart, I think that's something we need to take pay attention to. See, he says he'll give you the desires of your heart, but it's only for those who take delight in him delight in him. Before we even start talking about desires, the question is first, do you delight in him? Do you delight in the Lord? And that question there will speak about the desires. That question there would give me an understanding where my desires are. See, in the book of Proverbs for our morning medicine this morning, the Bible says, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will delight you. So when the Lord speaks about taking delight in him, he's given us the understanding in Proverbs chapter two, verse 10, about the delight he's speaking of. How will I take delight in the Lord? How will I know that I'm delighted in the Lord? You allow wisdom to enter your heart and knowledge will delight you. See, the scripture here in the book of Proverbs speaks about the knowledge of the Lord. His knowledge will delight you. His wisdom will enter your heart. In other words, there is a renewal or a cleansing of the heart I once had. And now my knowledge is in God's desires. And now do I have knowledge of them? I have the wisdom to want to do it. Why? Because that's what I delight in. No longer do I delight in my own. I delight in his will. No longer is my delight of doing and living my life, but I have, I have delight to live his life. That's the knowledge. It's not the knowledge of how many things that I believe that God can give me. No, it's I believe all the things that I can give him. Because my life is no longer my own and that becomes my delight. That becomes my heart. See, and sometimes we get this thing confused. And we 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 become we we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, but yet we don't have a delight for him. We don't have a delight for the knowledge of him. We don't have the delight for operate in the wisdom of him. We have the delight of doing his will. But yet will always quote his scriptures. He'll give you the desires of your heart, but yet never have a delight in him. Why would God give us the desires if our desires is not even to delight him? 
if our focus is not on him when it comes to our desires. I wanted us to grab hold of this because the question for our morning medicine is, you speak about desires, but that's not really the true question. The true question is, what is your delight? What is your delight? What do you have a delight for? Do you have a delight to fulfill his will? Do you have a delight to allow him to occupy your life? Do you have a delight for his will over your will? What if God told you that your desires don't match his desires? What if God's desire was not for you to have that thing? See, that's what it means when it says you delight in the knowledge of him because you delight that he knows better than you. So whatever God says, oh man, that's a delicacy. So if God says no, praise the Lord. That becomes my delight. Why? Because wisdom would tell me that he knows more. And not only that he knows more, let me apply what he said because it's better than what I said. What is your delight? What is your delight? Because what you delight in, that's where your desires will be. And the honest truth about it, as the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 19, he said they love darkness rather than light. Is your delight in darkness? Is your delight in darkness? and acquiring more knowledge of how you can entertain evil. And that's the wisdom you come with because that's what you're applying, because that's what you delight in. David said, create in me a pure heart. Man, purify this thing. Because I no longer want my desires, I want your desires. Because I come to this understanding, that's where the delight is in. That's where the true delicacy is. And this is what I want us to have in our minds for our morning medicine this morning. Where is your delight? Where is your delight? What do you delight in? It's good that you know that scripture, but do you know that whole scripture? It's good that you're able to say, hey, God desires, give me the desires of my heart. But I want you to say, you can, I want us to understand we can be saying that from a selfish place. Because our delight is not in him, it's in us. And whatever will make me happy and not what makes him happy. But yet I want the blessings from him that I'm not able to give myself. The Bible calls that a double-minded man, James chapter one. He said he should not ask me for anything because he's like a seed tossed to and fro. What is your delight? What do you delight in? What do you have a taste for? Why do you want that thing? Why do you want what you're asking? Do you have a delight in the knowledge of the Lord of growing in him? Or do you just want to grow in the riches of the world? In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, I like what Paul says this. Paul, uh, on his mission trips, rolled with a lot of believers. And one of the, one of the persons that he rolled with his name was Demas. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, I want to read this. He says, make every effort to come to me soon because Demas has deserted me since he loved this present world and has gone to Thessalonica. He said, Demas has deserted me because he loved this present world. We saw his, where his delight was. Demons was rolling with Paul, 
but he never had a delight in serving the Lord. And this is what I asked this morning for our morning medicine. Where are you at? Because you can be saved, but never have a delight for him. Never have a delight to grow in him. Never have a delight to have more knowledge of him. Never have a delight to know the knowledge of his will. What does God want for your life? What is God saying for your life? And some of us can know, have the knowledge, but, ne but never have the wisdom to apply it. That just shows that's really not truly your delight. Where's your delight? You can speak about your desires all day. But where are you at when it comes to delighting in him? It's a selfish place to come to God talking about desires, but yet have no delight in him. No delight in fulfilling his will and want to use those things that he bless you with to go against his will for your life, to go against his will or his standard of his word. You're praying for a house, but then you're praying for that house to be shacking up. Where's your delight? That's the separator there. Because I want us to understand this. The enemy will love to give you hit your desires if your desires match his. Remember John chapter 6 when the, 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 when the Pharisees and the religious leaders were talking to Jesus. Jesus said, no, your father is the devil because you desire his will. You want to do what your father does. In other words, you desire his will. I'm just saying, where are your desires? What do you delight in? That was always the issue with God's people because of their delight. What did they delight in? They knew how to quote their desires. They knew how to pray when it came when it comes to pray to God and say, God, I pray this and I want this and I want that. God, make this better. Get me out of all these desires. But yet when it came to that delight in him, that's where it fell short. So I'm glad you could quote your desires. But where's your delight? Do you delight in the knowledge of him? Do you delight in the, that God saved your life? Do you delight in knowing his will instead of your will? Or, if you're, or are you saved in him but still want to do your thing? I leave us with that morning medicine this morning. Where's your delight? Because in the end, one's going to lead to life and the other leads to destruction. Don't be fooled by your own desires. Stand courage.